please uh, stand with me and let's pray together and ask for God's presence with us this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we gather today in your presence to praise you for who you are, for what you've done in our lives. This morning, Lord, may your Holy Spirit descend onto this church, uniting us with each other, with your Son, Jesus Christ, and with you. Amen. Uh, stay standing for our first hymn today. Let's sing loudly. Uh, God is our song, hymn number 22. God is our song.
weather appropriate attire. Because we like to play things like basketball and soccer and football. Well, for me, I had to wear a different kind of clothing because my dad had a different set of rules. I had to wear slacks, which are like long pants. And I had to wear like a button-up shirt. I had to be dressed kind of fancy. Maybe that's why I always dress fancy to work now. All the other teachers come in t-shirts. I'm coming in a t shirt and tie. I don't know. I blame it on my dad. But I didn't like getting teased by all the other kids. All the other kids would make fun of me because it would be 100 degrees in Loma Linda, and I'm the one guy out there with long pants trying to play basketball in long pants. I felt really self-conscious about my clothes. That means I was thinking about myself a lot. And the teasing got to a certain level where I finally decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wear shorts underneath my pants. And when I get to school, I'm going to change in the bathroom into my shorts. Now I know what you're thinking. Didn't you say that your dad works at the school? This is a horrible idea. But when you're young, you don't always have the best ideas. Now, let me tell you another thing about my dad. Since he grew up in Barbados, they have a different kind of punishment than you guys have when you get in trouble. So your punishments are things like go to your room, or maybe you have a time out. I know, because I use those on my kids, because I'm from California, okay? My dad, though, was not from California, so he had different kinds of punishments. Later, you can ask some of your parents what those types of punishments would be. I don't want to frighten you right now. There's no need for you to think too much about it, but it was a lot more severe than your guys' punishments. That's all I want to tell you, okay? So we didn't really break the rules in my house, but the teasing got so bad, I wanted to, I wanted to follow my friends. I wanted to be just like my friends and wear shorts and a t-shirt to school. So I came up with this cunning plan to wear shorts underneath my pants. And everything was going perfectly. I got to school, my teacher's classroom had a bathroom in there, I went into the bathroom, I took off my long pants, and I just wore shorts. And it was glorious! I went out to recess, and just the free-flowing air, I felt like Michael Jordan, you guys don't know who that is, but it's like LeBron James, but better. And um, so I felt like that. I was flying around the basketball courts. High five, you're right. I was amazing out there. I was feeling so good. Until the worst possible thing that could have happened, happened. I went up for a, a slam dunk. Well, it was a slam dunk in my mind, but really I'm not tall enough to slam dunk, so it's more like a layup. So I went up for a layup. And of course I made this shot. I know what you were thinking I was going to miss. No, of course I made it. And I was celebrating the bucket. I was like, yes, yes, yes. And then I slipped off the side of the basketball court. Now, at Double Linda, the basketball courts were right next to the soccer field. And I was celebrating past the basket. And you know, I was really excited about making that shot. And I slipped. And as I slipped, I was thinking to myself, no big deal. I always get up when I fall. And this particular time, it was a big deal because when I slipped, I slipped into a huge puddle of mud. I know what you're thinking, that's dirty. Now mud never bothered me that much. You just take a shower, you're fine. But in this particular case, it was not a good situation. And I'm going to tell you why. Mud covered my right side of my body from my feet all the way to my head. There was mud on this entire side of my body. Recess ended, and I was thinking to myself, what am I going to do? How am I going to get cleaned off? I can't, like, hose off. Okay, I do have those extra pants. I can at least put those pants back on. No sooner had I been thinking about putting those other pants back on than I get back to my teacher's classroom. My teacher's classroom was one of the best classrooms at the school because she had brand new couches. And after recess, we got to sit on the brand new couches and have worship. It was like the best time of the day. She would always tell us cool stories on the benches, or the couches. Now this particular day, however, I was the one student 
not allowed to sit on the couches. And why do you think I was not allowed to sit on the couches? Yes. Because you were dirty. That is correct. Because I was dirty. I had all this mud all over me and I was not allowed to sit on the couches. I had to sit in the back of the classroom at my desk. And if that wasn't bad enough, the teacher, who was a friend of my dad, who said my dad works at the school, called my dad to tell him that he needed to bring me an extra change of clothing. And I was so mad at her, even though I wanted to be clean, I didn't want my dad to come down to the classroom because I was wearing shorts. And I didn't want to get in trouble. And this is, this is the scary part of the story. I'm sitting there waiting. And my dad comes in to the fifth grade classroom. The door opens and I feel like it creaks. It probably didn't, but in my mind it's like, and my dad walks in. He's looking like he's like 10 feet tall. My dad's probably only like 5'10", but at this point in the story, I'm like, oh no, it's Goliath. <laughs> and I'm starting to shake. I'm starting to get real nervous. What's going to happen? My dad, he's got a big smile on his face. I'm like, this is peculiar. Why does he have a smile? He should be angry. My dad has a smile. He comes over to me. He gives me an extra pair of pants and an extra, an extra shirt. And he's like, go and change and get clean in the bathroom. And I'm like, okay, this is a trick. I know. I'm going to get it when I get home. He doesn't want the Californians to see what's going to happen. So I have to wait until I get home. And so for the rest of the day, I can't even think about what the teacher's saying. I can't even think about what my friends are saying. I'm super scared of what's going to happen when I get home. Finally, later that day, I get home, and my dad doesn't bring it up at all. I'm like, yes, he forgot what happened. We have dinner. Everything's going great. He didn't even say anything to my mom. I'm like, oh, man, my dad forgot. This is great. When you're in fifth grade, do you think people forget easily? They don't. They don't. Later that night, it's bedtime. I'm like, oh, here it is. Now this is when it's going to be. My dad opens my bedroom door, and the door creaks. It probably didn't, but in my mind it did. And then in walks Goliath again. I'm like, yeah, this is it. I had put on like four or five pairs of pants. You can ask your parents why I did that. It wasn't cold. So my dad walks in. He sits in on the side of the bed and he says, son, he says, son, why did you have on shorts today? And I said, well, dad, as you know, in Southern California, unlike Barbados, the temperatures get up into the triple digits. I didn't say that. I just said it was hot. I said, dad, it was hot. All my friends get to wear shorts and a t-shirt to school. I wanted to be just like my friends. Right? So I told my dad, I want to be just like my friends. And my dad said, son, I'm very disappointed in you. I was saying, when, well, you, you guys know this, when they say the disappointed line, you'd rather just take the beat and say, okay, give me the spanking, okay? But my dad didn't, that day, he said, son, I'm very disappointed in you. You know the rules that I've set in this family. You should not be following your friends should be following me. And I remember that story to this day. And I know Pastor Mike today is going to be talking about following our Father. He's going to be talking about following Jesus. And I want you guys to remember, and at times when you're at school and even on summer vacation, you can follow your friends or you can follow your Father. When you follow your friends, a lot of times they can lead you down a path where you can slip and fall and get muddy. If you follow your Father, you're going to be clean. You're going to get an extra set of clothing, and you're not even going to get the spanking that you thought you were going to get. Don't laugh at that. That's not funny. That's serious. Hey, may God bless you, kids. Remember to follow Jesus. Um, there's no children's church today, so go back and sit with your parents, and when Pastor Mike says something cool, say, Amen! May God bless you, children. I'd like to invite the ushers for the offering at this time. You know, how many of you have uh, had your kids walk up to you and say, Mom, Dad, I want to get you something for Christmas. 
but you know they don't have money. Oh, it's your birthday, and you know they rush out to the store and they buy you something, and you know it's your money, and they're buying that, and all of a sudden, it's your birthday, and they walk up and say, look what I got with my money. In reality, it was the money that you gave them. But still, you're super happy, and you're excited because they gave you something with your money. Right? That's how God is. It's His money. We have that money. And He's asking for some of that back. So now it's our turn to give some of that back. And when we give that back, God feels the same way we feel about our kids. They're giving something back to me. But it's your money. We're just giving it back what belongs to God. Let's bow our hands for a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for the blessings that you're about to receive now as the ushers collect the offering. Bless each hand, bless those who are not able to give. In Jesus' name we ask you to pray. Amen. sing our song. Today, uh, I'd like to add a, another special element to that request. Since it's Pastor Mike's last Sabbath here, I'd like to invite you to come down the middle and folks who would like to add your presence by surrounding him with part of this prayer as a blessing for their future. Feel free to come forward and join together at the front as we sing. Our Heavenly 
Father, we come before you today to worship, to celebrate, and rejoice in your goodness. We honor you as our God and look to you to fill our hearts and minds with your love and your presence. We thank you for all your gifts, both physical and spiritual, that enrich our lives. We are grateful for our daily sustenance and provision. We acknowledge you as the source and sustainer of our lives. Yet, we come confessing our human frailties and cherished faults. Remove from us thoughts and feelings that would misrepresent you. Expunge from us any pride, anger, or any judging of others that we may have the true freedom and forgiveness that comes from Jesus alone. Give us the power to deny self and live in Jesus. Restore to our stress-filled lives the fruits of your Holy Spirit's presence. We pray for the leaders of our tension-filled world and our highly divided country. We ask that you would hold back the winds of strife, be it from war or politics. We also ask that you bless our church community as we enter a time of change. We ask that you bring comfort to those who feel sad or wounded and bring forgiveness and forbearance to any who might harbor ill will. On this special day of farewell, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for the ministry of our departing Pastor Kim and pray your rich blessings on him and his family as they move on. We ask that you guide their steps and direct their future. We especially ask for healing for the beloved Joey. Heal him according to the rich blessings of your presence. And as Ma Pastor Mike comes before us this last time, we pray that you would anoint his mind and his lips with your spirit and make our ears to hear your voice speak to our individual needs. We thank you for all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. As a pastor, I hope the answer is 
helping people follow Jesus more closely. Because what else are we called to do as Christians? Is there anything else that we must do than to follow Christ? No, that's comprehensive. In doing so, we become like God, we imitate Him, and we, co- we keep all the commandments and even more. So following Jesus is the meaning of life. It is who we are. We wear it as our name. I am a person who follows Christ is the badge of Christianity. So, I'd like to ask you that one more time. How closely are we following Jesus? Because sometimes when I think I'm following Jesus very well, I might not be. Yeah? Has that happened to you before? And has someone pointed out to you? Oh, no, I don't know that you're following Jesus. Yes, I am! I'm full of love and compassion. Daisy, my dog, we've had Daisy for three years now. And uh, since she was five months old. And Daisy follows me everywhere I go. I mean, she would love to be here right now, right next to me. She would. Because she follows me to the bathroom. She, you know, she's not allowed on the bed. So when I'm in bed, she goes under the bed, right underneath my head. Because that's as close as she can get. When I am walking around the house, she's so close to, to my legs that I kick her with every step. And, and you would think, if you get kicked in the head with every step, you would like kind of back off a little bit? No. She, it doesn't matter. She just, that's what she does. That's what Christianity is. We follow Jesus. Even if we get kicked in the head, we follow Him no matter what. We must all become like Daisy. Christians are those who refuse to stop following Christ no matter what. Job says this. In chapter 13, verse 15, Though God may slay me, I will trust Him still. Everyone around Job kept telling him, Give up on God, because obviously God has given up on you. And Job says, Even if God has given up on me, I will not give up on Him. Even if I get kicked in the head with every step, I will still follow my God. Now following Christ is is not without issues. Because, as I mentioned already, uh, we don't always agree on what that is. And we are sometimes mistaken on on, on, uh, following Christ when we may not be. For example, for a while, for centuries, I think, and maybe until recently, people have taught that being a Christian is to abstain from anything fun or pleasurable. Stop laughing. Because that's pleasurable, you should not laugh. And so we still have that, that, um, uh, that lingering idea in Christianity. Do you know where uh, some of the things that come from from that idea that we should not be having fun as Christians is uh, running in the sanctuary. Now, now some of us are really still against running in the sanctuary and I am uncomfortable with that. But that's one of the things that came and we don't even realize it. Children, do you know why children run? Because they're happy. And do you know what Christians have been teaching for centuries? Stop, wipe that smile off your face. And so that's why we have that rule. That's why we have that rule. Don't run in the sanctuary. Stop being so happy. And so that's one of the misinterpretations of what it means to follow Jesus. Another interpretation uh, uh, is that we think that following Jesus is to 
to point out the sins of others, right? Are we guilty of that? I'm guilty of it, you know? And, and sometimes I say, well, I'm doing this in love, you know, because I love you. I will point out your sins. You know, I, I tell you this, um, I have some friends that will point out my sins. Um, and, you know, I know they love me so much. And when they do it, I'm never offended. Do you know why? Because people are not dumb. You know when someone loves you. You know when someone is not judging you when they point out your sin. You know it. And sometimes they don't even have to say anything, right? They just walk by you and you feel like, oh man, I feel the judgment, right? So speaking the truth in love, it really has to come from within. We have to become love. We have to become like God because God is love. I hope that the work I have endeavored to do here is to clarify what it means to follow Christ. Um, the prayer of a little girl is very telling. Dear Jesus, little girl of maybe five years old, she says, Dear Jesus, please make the bad people good and the good people nice. What, the, what does that tell you? That's like so it cuts to the heart, doesn't it? And is it really good? Are we really being good if we're not being nice? Jesus came to show us the way. And the reason he didn't speak on theology very much, but spoke on the everyday life, is that if we were just decent people, we would be halfway there in doing God's will, maybe all the way there. Jesus said, you tie them dill, mint, and cumin. You are so meticulous about wanting to keep the law of God that even if you have 10 pieces of rice, you will bring one piece to God to the temple. And I applaud you for your detailed beliefs, but you have neglected what is so much more important. Weightier matters of the law is what Jesus came to teach us. Do you know why? Because if you keep the core of who God is, if you really follow Christ, you will do everything else automatically. You don't have to worry about those things. And, and Jesus appeals to our common sense. He says, look, if you are gushing out blood and you're bleeding to death, are you going to worry about the laundry you left in the washer? Sometimes you do this, right? Ah, I left the washer. How many times do you do that? We do it all the time. And that's why my clothes smell like mold. Because if you keep it more than a couple of hours and dry it, you can't tell when the clothes are dry. But once you start sweating, oh, what's that smell? Stop laughing. <laughs> we have common sense. I don't care what your wife says about you. I believe you have common sense. And Jesus appeals to your common sense and says, look, there are more important things in life than what, what you're worrying about. There are more important things in life than worrying about that girl with the short skirt.
Before you point out the speck in someone else's eye, go look in the mirror and see the telephone pole in yours. Your eye must be really big to fit that log in there. Jesus says, let me tell you what the weightier matters of the law are. What does he say? Matthew 20, 20. If you know nothing else but this and study those three words and live by it, God will be so happy. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. He, he paraphrases Micah 6 8, which says, God has shown you how to live, what you must do to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. And this justice. Please, for so long, Christians have interpreted this justice as judgment towards sinners. Is that what it is? Absolutely not. In the context of what Jesus is saying, he was speaking towards those that, that were interpreting justice that way. And he's saying that's not what justice is. Justice is bringing fairness to those who are oppressed and poor. Justice is giving mercy to those who don't even deserve it. Really? Is helping needy people, hurting people, that much of a big deal to God? Is it? Answer me. Absolutely. In fact, He seems to say that that's the only reason you'll make it. In Matthew 25, what does he say? Come, enjoy the kingdom prepared for you. Why, Lord? What have I done? And he says, Because you preach the word. Because you have perfect attendance to church. And now I would like that as a pastor. Now I'm, I'm really enjoying the, the, uh, the fuller uh, attendance today. I, I don't know how to interpret this. It's like, you're so happy I'm leaving uh, that you, you got us. What is this? Why, you know, why wasn't this full like uh, before? Uh, anyway, Mio, Mio is my nickname. You know that. Mr. Easily Offended. That's, that's what my wife calls me every day. Stop being Mio. Um, so, what was I saying? Uh, I need to stay to the script. This is how I get into trouble. Um, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, Matthew 7, 21, but only the one who does the will of my Father. Now, I want to, I want to say that, that uh, we should not be so fearful about, am I going to make it? Trust God with that, and just worry about following Jesus, okay? So, if I were to, had to have more time, I would expound on what, this, what Jesus is really saying, what it means to really follow the will of the Father, and which is to just follow God. Be, be a daisy, yeah, just, just like, just so close. Where are you going, Jesus? You know what? You, just, can you give me a break a little bit? No, no, be like Jacob. Clung to God and say, I will not let you go. And, 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 and the angel said, well, hey, you know what? I have to go. I, I got, I, I'm busy. Uh, um, and Jacob clung, I will not let you go. So I had to break the rib and say, okay, I got to like uh, make you uh, disabled so I can, I can get out of here. We got to be like Jacob. Am I making any sense? You got to cling to God. We got to follow Jesus. We got to just be like, Lord, where are you? You going? Am I following you? Professing Christ may not be much at all. Lord, Lord, we have to live, live our our profession of the Lord. What does it mean to call God our Lord? How does that look at 10 a.m. on Monday morning? What does it mean 
to follow Christ. I hope you got some sense over the last eight years of what it means, what the core values of Christ really are. You know, and one thing that I want to leave with you is this, this word of hope. How do we follow Christ more closely? What's the, what's the key? What do you think? What, is there a formula? Is, is there a shortcut? Is there, is there some, 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 uh, 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 um, have you, have you ever, uh, done this before where, where, um, you, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of something, Rubik's Cube, Rubik's Cube, I can do it in, uh, less than two minutes, uh, and I was gonna do that for a children's story one time, but, uh, I can do that in heaven, uh, if I ever try to do Rubik's Cube, you know what it is, right? It will take, I, 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 I am not that brilliant to figure it out. Well, there's formulas, you know? There's little patterns that you can use. All you have to know is about four of them. And then you can, fig, you can do it in less than two minutes. You can do it too, Isabel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can teach you, yeah. Th is there something like that for, for following Christ? Is there some, some, if I do this and this and this and this, then I can follow Christ and I want to tell you what that is today before I go. Well, you want to know? What is it? It's just one thing. Just one thing we have to do. And <clears throat> that is all we have to do to follow Christ and become like Him is to Stop trying to hide and cover up. The biggest enemy is not the devil, whom we'd like to blame to deflect our guilt, as Adam and Eve tried to blame the serpent for their disobedience. The enemy is the temptation to hide and cover ourselves. Do you know what the devil is really afraid of? It is a life that is open and authentic in God's presence. Someone who can come as just as you are before the Lord. That is the most fearful thing to the enemy. Do you know why? Why? Because if you are yourself before God, if you are just being real for one minute, that is an invitation for the Holy Spirit to enter your life. That's all it takes for you to be a real person. When you are, when you can just say, you know what, I'm not going to wear this mask anymore. I am going to let down my facade. You know what, I don't care what others, others will say about me in church. I'm going to go to church and be myself. Now, I, I, I tried to do that while I was here. And um, I, I have to say, I'm, I'm sorry to those that were offended that I was maybe a bit too uh, uh, myself. I no, no, uh, I never intended to to harm or or offend anyone. I hope uh, you realize that. Do you remember the first story, first sermon I preached to you? It was an audition sermon. This is a sermon that you liked enough to to hire me. Uh, it, 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 and in that story, I, I, t I told the story, if some of you that were here might remember that story of the guy who, who, were, who was looking for a job at the zoo. I told this story recently at Praxis. So he was desperate for a job, he goes to the zoo, and the zoo guy says, you know, um, a while ago, our gorilla died, and uh, we don't have enough money to acquire a real and authentic gorilla. So we'll pay you to put on this gorilla suit and get in the cage and, and, and uh, pretend to be a gorilla. Well, the guy is kind of offended by this because his mother didn't raise him to be a gorilla, but he's desperate for a job. So he gets in the cage and at first he's kind of shy, but after a while 
He gets really into it and he's swinging on the vines one day and he is swinging so enthusiastically that he swings right over the cage into the next one where they keep the lion. <laughs> Instantly the lion's breath is upon him and he panics in fear and he starts yelling, help, help, let me out of here. It really surprised the, the, the onlookers to, to see a speaking gorilla. And then he hears the whisper from the lion. <laughs> Shut up, you idiot, or we'll both get fired. <laughs> Not one authentic creature in the whole zoo. I think life is like that. Life is full of cover-ups, full of hiding and wearing masks so that people will not see the real us. And if we want to follow Christ, if we really want to, we must be a community of people where we are free to be ourselves. Because once we take off the mask and we begin to become authentic, that is the moment for God. That is the permission that you give to God and the Holy Spirit enters your life and Holy Spirit causes you to have self-awareness. The Holy Spirit causes you to repent. King David was having a great life until Prophet Nathan came and told the story about the rich man who had many sheep but still stole that one precious lamb from the neighbor and killed it and gave it to the neighbor. Remember that story? David is furious. Who is this man? He must be fun punished. And what does Nathan say? You are that man. Do you know why prophets were killed by kings so much in the Bible? Because that was their job. To point out, to, to hope that, that these kings and other leaders would take off their masks and realize who they really are. But they didn't, when, they, when, when, when the sins were pointed out to them, they didn't like it. And they had the prophet slaughtered. Now what makes David so great is not that he was a great guy because he was an adulteress, I mean an adulterer, and a murderer, and a liar, and whatever else. He was terrible. But he remains someone who is so holy and good. Why? Why? Because when someone gave him the opportunity to become authentic, he took it. And he cried out, Psalm 51 records, Cleanse me, O Lord. Wash me and make me whiter than snow. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That's a prayer of repentance. Of a person who realizes who they really are when they finally become real with God. What else does God need from us but authenticity? If we can be real with ourselves. If God's church can be a place where people feel comfortable to take off their masks and be themselves, it would be a place where they would meet God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what I believe, and that's what I feel called to promote. Now, as I close, 
I want to I want to apologize for for um, for leaving um, frankly I I really did not think it would be that much of a big deal to you um, because I like I said at the beginning I had this mindset that we're all equals and uh, no one person is more important than the other so um, I'm not indispensable and there are far more qualified uh, workers of God so I was very surprised to see all of the get all the love in the last few weeks, all the tears. And I'm like, I didn't know you liked me that much. How I mean, you never smiled at me before? Now you're all blubbering in front of me. Uh, tell me you love me, you know, before I decide. Well, thank you so much for all the love. And I, I, I'd like to apologize if you feel abandoned. I'd like to apologize to those that that I have made myself clear to through my speech. Uh, from time to time, I have offended you. For example, in my sermon titled, Don't Make God Number One. If you were not offended, you would have heard that the conclusion said, make God the only one. Because if you make God number one, who is number two? God says, no other gods. That's what I meant. I wasn't saying, don't make God number one. I apologize to those that, that I have offended with maybe unclear speech. Uh, I have to tell you, this is the last thing I have to say to you. I was the one that asked to be transferred. So stop bothering the conference. Uh, uh, well, there are a few reasons why I thought it would be best for this church that I move on. But the biggest reason is not, the biggest reason that I decided to, to go is not because some people asked me to leave or some were campaigning against me. That's not the very main reason. I, 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 I am willing to suffer. The main reason I'm leaving is that, as you already know, a pastor does not reach everyone. And my leading and preaching have not ministered to everyone. And for almost eight years, these poor people haven't felt inspired to follow Christ. I am concerned about that. Even if it's just a few that don't feel inspired by me to follow Christ, I feel like someone else should give it a go. Um, I have no greater, I have no other agenda in my life. I will lay down my life for you if that's what it means, if that's what it will take for you to be a daisy, to follow Christ closely. I have no ill feelings at the moment <laughs> toward anyone because I try my best not to discriminate love. I will say to you for the last time, no matter who you are in this congregation, I love you. Uh, so that we can have long hugs 
and uh, just to tell you in person how much uh, I love you and I, how much I pray for you each day and, uh, I, and to apologize for, uh, for having offended you. It, 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 you know, I hope you, I hope you can believe me when I say I never intended to. Um, and so I, I want to leave this place with good with everyone and uh, we can remain friends. Um, I can't tell you where I'm going yet because it's not finalized, but uh, it's, it's kind of close to this place. <laughs> I said too much! I said too much! There must, there's, there's a kind of like a pattern of the pastors going from here to somewhere. I still haven't revealed anything. I, I haven't. I haven't said it. Technically, I haven't told you. No, I haven't. Listen, I'm not moving, you know that. I'm still at the 3638 3rd Avenue, Locker Center. I, I can give you my code to enter the house if, uh, if you want to wait for me. And we can chat and we can eat uh, my food. Uh, if you come to have my house, you have to eat kimchi. And, uh, and you have to take off your shoes even if your feet smell. <laughs> We're gonna really keep in touch, you know, and, and you know, I have, I've asked you from time to time, if, you, if anyone is out there that wants to spend all day with me uh, sometime, please call me, because I don't, I don't wanna be the one to, to uh, ask you if you don't really like me, so, you know, I'll just know, oh yeah, yeah. this way I know for sure that you wanna be my friend. Uh, this is my last Sabbath, but it's not my last day of work because I gotta clean out my my room uh, and uh, I have to, you know, remove the portable toilet in there and and uh, and what else? Oh, I need to. I have appointment with so many of you until like the mid June, um, and so if if any of you want to. Uh, Buy me lunch. <laughs> June fifteenth is my last day. It's my last Sabbath. The June fifteenth. Um, I love you all. May God bless you. Well, Mike, you certainly can tell the responsible people that you're loved and appreciated. I do want to do a, a couple things uh, here from the front in, in a little bit of semi-formal and formal way. First of all, uh, we want to invite all of you after we're finished here. We've got a lot of really good uh, little uh, snacks and food out, uh, enough for you to spend some time here. And we want to give every one of you a chance to speak to Mike uh, personally. Unfortunately, Jean is not able to be here today, had to be out of town, but it's just kind of had to be the day because of so many other commitments and, and conflicts. So we know that you will accept those on behalf of your family. Are, are the kids here today? Just Gwen. Is Gwen, are you brave enough to come or you like to stay where you are? Okay, we'll let you stay where you are, okay? We'll give you a break, okay? <laughs> Your dad can take all the up front, all right? Uh, first of all, uh, I'd like to invite, I understand we have some children who have uh, some presentations to make. I'd like to invite uh, them up. And a couple of ladies have a floral presentation that we would like to give first. So we have, uh, on behalf of our children, representing the children of the church, a number of cards that were written uh, by the kids in the lower divisions. And they uh, want to give those to you. And uh, on behalf of the adults, we have a. Well, this I is guess not the first time. This is not the first time I received love from the children. Way before they knew that I was leaving, some of these uh, Sapsu classes have written notes of appreciation to me. Can you believe this?
Thank you very much. Well, Mike, it's been eight years together. All good things must come to an end. And we want to thank you for your passion, your love, your commitment, your vulnerability. All these things have meant a lot to us. And we want to leave you with a few parting gifts on behalf of the church. Yay! <laughs> One in my pocket, I'm sure you'll appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll be presenting a plaque, but uh, we also have... Uh, I, don't, I don't need a plaque. <laughs> you made me have one, so I had to make you have one. I don't think either one of us put them on our walls. <laughs> uh, I thought I saw it in your bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's in my office, but it's not on the but uh, also we have a living arrangement, of floral arrangement for you to take home, to leave in your home. It will last a long time. We'll remind you of our love and our continued love for you. We we'll see that every day. We know that the Valero Drive Church is a great deal for you. So on behalf of uh, appreciation and gratitude, Valero Drive Church of Seventh-day Adventist, Presents to Pastor Mike Kim for nearly eight years of pastoral leadership, teaching, passion, preaching, and vision casting. We honor you and give thanks for giving us a clear purpose to love and to serve one another and to love and serve the world. May God bless you. still time to add to this envelope yeah. if you would like. I was going to say, Daisy may sleep under the bed, but you can put that under the pillow, okay? <laughs> I'm kidding. But, but it's true. We, we, uh, love gifts are a part of what's outside. So uh, as we conclude our service today, spend time to, to reach out and connect with Mike and enjoy the fellowship together on this uh, special day of celebration. I'm not changing my number. Uh, it's 818 Got Mike still, but I might call it Hot Mike from now on because it's the same number. Uh, so, uh, cheers!
for all your uh, support here and your hard work and dedication. Love your family and the AC you built it. Like I said, uh, just hard to start. That we appreciate every week that you have taught us. So thank you for all the opportunities and for really supporting the programs that you have. I just wanted to let you know that I really appreciate uh, when you first came with uh, Friendship Connection. And you started here at the church of Lord, my family. Blessings to you, your family, and I know that God will bless you and use you for your I appreciate everything you've done. I wish you the best, and I hope that everything goes well.
And we thank you that we have this church family that reminds us when we veer off to get back on the track. I pray that even though I leave, that the reminder to follow Christ will remain every week. And may this group of people become the light of the world so bright that there is no mistaking, even from outer space. So, as the choir sang today, let the fire begin and continue in the hearts, in our hearts, in this body of Christ. We lift ourselves to you. We worship you with our lives. In Jesus' name, Amen.